G'day guys, it's Mark from TAP, the Automotive Technician. Today I'd like to share with you a diagnostic technique that quite often gets forgotten about, the voltage drop test. First of all, we need to ask ourselves what is voltage drop and how do we carry out that test? Kirchhoff's law, that's his voltage law, states that the net electromotive force around a closed circuit loop is equal to the sum of potential drops around the loop. Sound confusing? Or in other words, all the available voltage must be used within the circuit. Or in other words, in this particular case, the alternator is the power supply, the battery is the load. We can see that 14 volts is being put out by the alternator and by the time it gets back to the alternator housing we must have zero volts. All the voltage must be used within the circuit. So how do we carry out a voltage drop test? We're looking for a potential difference between a high point and a low point. We would normally measure the voltage at the power source compared to the load and then subtract the two. That would give us our voltage drop but there's a simpler and more definitive way of doing that particular test. When we look at the leads on our multimeter, we usually say, well, this is the positive lead and that's the negative lead, but that's not necessarily the case. We're looking for a potential difference. This is our high point, this is our low point. If we put the red lead onto the positive side of our power source and our black lead onto the positive side of our load, we can now measure the potential difference on the positive side of the wire therefore calculating our voltage drop. As a rule of thumb, acceptable voltage drop is 0.3 of a volt or 300 millivolts. Anything greater than that, then we need to start looking for a voltage drop. So let's put this testing technique into practice. Today, as an example, I'll be using the BA Falcon that's behind me. It's suffering from a charging system fault. So we can use a voltage drop test to try and isolate the problem. In this case, the battery has been tested, charged and found to be in good condition. But there's one other thing we need to do when doing a voltage drop test. We need to load the circuit. In this case, since we're looking at a charging system, we need to run the vehicle. It soon becomes obvious that 11.9 volts is not acceptable. That's not going to charge our battery. Let's now check the output of the alternator. I'm now on the back of the alternator. You can see the red lead from a multimeter is on the output terminal of the alternator and the negative side of my multimeter is on the body of the alternator itself. So let's start it up and see what sort of reading we get directly off the back of the alternator. Well, that's more like it, 14.58 at the back of the alternator. So why the discrepancy? We can see the difference between the output of the alternator, 14.58, Take away the battery or the load in this particular case, 11.9. That leaves us with a discrepancy of 2.68 volts voltage drop. Where are those 2.68 volts going? Let's use the second method of voltage drop to find out where it is. I now have the positive lead of my multimeter onto the body of the alternator. I come up to my battery, which is the actual load in this case, and on the negative side, I have my black lead. Now what we need to do is look at our multimeter when the vehicle's running and find out that we have no voltage in fact or less than 300 millivolts. And in this case we only have, what's that, 5.7 millivolts. It's minimal. It's not near the 0.3 of a volt or 300 millivolts that we worry about. So let's go on the positive side of the charging system. We're now checking the positive side of the charging circuit. So the output wire from my alternator has the positive lead of the multimeter on it. I come back to my battery and the negative side is on my positive terminal of the battery. A Little bit confusing. In actual fact, if you hook those leads up backwards, it won't make a scrap of difference. You'll just get a negative reading on your multimeter. And with our engine running, we've got about 2.63 before I did see 2.7 volts drop. We now have established that the voltage drop is on the positive side of the charging system. Let's look further. Of course, if you were going to do this test thoroughly, you would load up the circuit as in put on headlights, etc. How can we go one step further to isolate the fault? Well, I'm on my battery terminal here. Let's go to the battery post itself. Is there any problem there? 0.3 of a millivolt, no problems there. Let's go down to the alternator. What I've done now is to hook up to the output 
terminal of my alternator and back probe into the cable itself to see if there's a poor connection or resistance or corrosion. Let's look at our multimeter. And certainly we have it a little bit higher. It's 117 and that would account for a little bit of a voltage drop, but it's certainly not the 300 millivolts that we're worried about. Of course, one of the simplest ways to see if our diagnosis is correct is simply to bypass that positive lead. We know the faults in that area, so let's just bypass it. I'm connected to the output of the alternator, so let's just hook up this big jumper cable that I've got onto my positive side of the battery. And there we go, look at that. We're heading back to where we belong, 14.2 volts in this particular case. So we now have full voltage here instead of a voltage drop. If you are curious about what the actual fault is, if we zoom in there a little bit, I've actually installed a one ohm resistor in the output wire going back to the battery, just for testing purposes only. Guys, I hope that voltage drop measurement is a helpful test for you on your diagnostic path. By using the voltage drop test method, we were able to isolate the fault and further reinforce that diagnosis by means of a bypass wire to prove that we had the correct diagnosis. I hope you got something from today's video, guys. Stay tuned for further testing tips that will help make your diagnosing easier.